Hey guys. Hey everyone, did you know that you don't necessarily have to sell your home in order to buy a new one? We know that it's a big hang up for some people right now who are wanting to uh, sell their house, move somewhere else, and it's, it's hard right now in this market to line it all up, to sell your house and buy a new one at the same time. We're Carmen and Shane Feist with Beyond the Door Realty and we make real estate fun. And Gunther, and, she'll, oh, she'll make us a parent. <laughs> so. so you are the one that was gonna talk here. I'll talk. <laughs> <laughs> so actually a lot of people will call this like the Burr method, which stands for buy, rehab, rent, refinance, and repeat. Um, so, and it's not we're, necessarily we're putting... in that order, but if you look it up, you'll find information on that because maybe you didn't fix up your house. Maybe you um, didn't plan on doing it this way, but if you're, so let's talk about who this is for. So basically if you own a house right now and you're trying to figure out how I'm going to make all this line up, because it does get to be a lot. I know there's a lot of people there right now that say, you know what, I don't want to put my house in the market because I don't know where I'm going to go. And well, the other thing is that sellers are very cautious about accepting offers that have a home sale contingency because the market is so hot right now and there's so many people looking. If you go and offer and you have a home sale contingency and somebody else offers and they don't have a home sale contingency, your offer has got to be better in price than the other one. And not because, just a little, it has to be a lot better. Yeah, it, ha it has, that you have to give them a reason to choose your offer. If it's the same price, you have to sell your house and they don't, guess what, you're gonna lose out. And if you give them a higher offer, guess what, you're gonna lose out because you're paying more money for the same exact house. And so it does tend to be a really big sticking point for a lot of our buyers. And as things kind of happen, there tends to be themes in life and in business. And this is one of the themes in our business right now where we have several people approaching us who don't quite know how to handle this because they have to sell their house or so they think in order to buy a new one. So that being said, I mean, there's a lot of different options. Um, let's say, should we do, I mean, actually use some numbers here because sure. I'll probably confuse myself, but, um, so let's just say your house is worth $400,000 right now and you want to buy a $500,000 house and you owe about 200 on your house. That means you got $200,000 worth of equity there um, that you can actually pull out. So you won't be able to pull all that out. So you'll probably be able to pull about It's 80, about 70% is what they do on 75%. this type of, yeah, it depends on the lender, but you can count on uh, finding somebody for sure who could do it for 70%. So 70% of the value of your house. So if your house is worth 400,000, 70% of that 400,000 is what you could get a loan on. Then you subtract that $200,000 that you already owe. Right. So, so that gives you the money anyways for the down payment for the next one. Right, and if you're gonna live in the next one, chances are you're not gonna need as much as a down payment. Typically somewhere between 3% to 20%, just depending on what kind of loan you're getting. Um, so I think a lot of people are wondering what the heck do you do with the house then? If I'm not gonna live there, what am I gonna do with it? Well, there's all kinds of options and two of our favorite options. First off, you could just rent it out. Rent it out to people who are gonna move in and pay you rent every month and you would be super surprised right now at what places are renting for. It's, it's high, so I guarantee you, uh, nine times out of 10 or better, that rent is gonna cover your mortgage on that house plus some, so you're gonna make a little money, which probably means you might even be able to qualify for a little bit, a bit more, more house. of a house on, on the other side. The other thing you can do is another strategy that we've talked about is use that house for vacation rentals. So, um, like an Airbnb style, like almost like it's almost like a hotel. Um, if you're in Madison, for example, I do know like Madison does have its own um, criteria that you can't be less than right now, I think it's seven days um, to do that. But there's some exceptions. We're not going to let goals. Shane go down a squirrel See, right now. Squirrel. So it's just big ideas here. So you can either use it as just a rental or you can use it as a VRBO. They're two very different things. And we'd be happy to talk to you about both of those things. We have really good ways of analyzing and telling you what your cash flow is going to be. The other thing people think, um, if they're going to use it just as a straight rental, people get um, kind of their undies in a bundle actually because they're like, I don't want to be a landlord. And we're dealing with one of our clients right now in the same exact thing and they're considering actually keeping their house and turning it into a rental rather than listing it and so 
we um, can figure it out. We can have, um, we can actually give you some referrals for uh, property management where if you give a company, um, typically they're asking about 6%, but it tends to be about 10%. So if you figure out 10% of what your rents are and take that off, you can hire somebody who's gonna take care of the property for you. So you don't have to be the one that does it. And I know- You don't deal with the phone calls. You don't have to show the place. You don't have to write the leases up. You don't have to worry if they don't pay their rent, that kind of stuff, they take care of all of that. So people first off don't realize that that's available to you know Joe homeowner. Um, it is, there's lots of companies that would be happy to take on your rental and manage it. Um, and honestly, it's not that much. So here's the really great bonus to this whole thing. The reason you would wanna do it is because you don't have to line up the two transactions. Once you decide to keep yours as a rental, you can approach your bank and say, this is what I plan to do, how can you help me? You can find out how much money you can take out of that house that you currently own to use towards your down payment for the next one. We can also help you with what- Yeah, um, contact us and I'll help, you. I'll help show you kind of what we think your house should rent for, yeah. um, what to expect for expenses and that kind of stuff and how much you should probably be putting away every month. Um, so, for the unexpected. So once you have that information, um, the bank also will help you run some numbers and figure out exactly what that looks like for you. And then you can put in offers and you don't have to worry about that home sale contingency because you've already got everything lined up. And so... But you know what? Here's what the biggest bonus is. Besides it's all huge. that. It's huge. It's like right? a there's, snowball there's a effect. Things. But think about this. If you keep the home that you have right now, and let's say you owe $200,000 on it and you take out more of a mortgage on it, but your tenants are paying for it. 10, 20 years down the road, they're gonna be paying off that mortgage for 10, 20 years. Now, instead of just having $200,000, you're gonna have equity in the house you're living in, plus the one that you're renting out. And this doesn't have to be something that you have even a ton of equity in. So I would say even more importantly, for those of you who don't have a ton of equity, this is a super good strategy because buying and selling houses is really expensive. Closing costs, realtor fees, all those things add up a ton. So if you don't have a lot of equity, this might be a chance to really turn what you've already done into a snowball effect as a um, investment for your future. We actually have um, a, a family member who we encouraged to do this, this very same thing several years ago. They had just a small amount of equity in their house, but they had to move. And so we said, well, have you thought about renting it out? And so as we walked through the process and showed them what um I think his first words were hell no. Like, actually at first was his words like hell I no, I'm not doing that. that. But, yeah, so and we kind of showed him like if you take this money out now, I think they had maybe twenty thousand dollars in equity. And I said, You can get a twenty thousand dollar check. If you don't, here's what's gonna happen. And we walked through the loan. I said, here's what happens, your tenants pay your mortgage down every single month. What typically happens, not always, but what typically happens is real estate values go down. So real wow. estate or up Real estate values are going up and your mortgage is going down, which means this in between is the money you have in equity. And so this person um, has paid off, their tenants have paid off a ton of money. So I think at this point, this was probably seven years ago um, that they decided to keep it. Of course, our mailman, our mailman is here, here. and Gunther <laughs> has to say hi. Come on, baby, come on. So. <laughs> I don't know what I was just saying. So okay, basically, so seven has, years ago, he had, would have had $20,000 yes. if he would have sold it. Now, now I, I think, think he has close 000. to $200,000 in equity. And what's really cool is he actually used, used <coughs> that equity, tapped into it again. <coughs> Gunther. He's tapped into it again at least once, if not twice, to buy other properties. So um, to be able to use your tenants, to pay down your mortgage, to build your equity, to go ahead and do this all over again with the money that your tenants basically gave you and then maybe do it again and maybe do it again. What, what happens is just this massive snowball effect. So now instead of having one house that he sold seven years ago, he now has three properties. So, and it's all because he didn't sell his house seven years ago, truly. You know, they, they talk about like your home is probably the biggest investment that you'll ever have. But what if you had three? I mean, just think about that once. That's just kind of crazy to think of. No one ever thinks about having more than one home because you only can live in one place at a time a lot of times. But if you're using this as an investment strategy, 
Just think of what that could do for your retirement. I know a lot of people are worried about what's gonna happen with that. Now all of a sudden you've got rent coming in and your mortgages are paid off. The there's other there's thing a lot is, of cool things you can do. The other thing is I know people are like, well, the, the market's been hot for a long time and we don't know what's gonna happen. Well, here's the thing. If the tenants are paying your mortgage, it doesn't matter if the value of your house goes up or down. Your, your bills are still covered and so you can ride well, out. Let's, let's talk the, about that. You know, let's hey, let's say the market. No, hold on, I was hold on. speaking. Let's say. So you can ride out anytime there is like a dip in the market. Just ride it out. Don't sell them. Now you right. may. Now you I was going to go on that. So <laughs> let's say that the market does go down for because it happened in 08, 09, 10. Um, the market crashed hard. Where are values today from then? They're all up. So if you have enough time to ride that out. Think about that. Instead of you having to sell because of a bad financial situation or um, the something that you have no control over, you know, crashes the market, and you can ride that out for five years, you're going to be so much better off because your mortgage is still getting paid down. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And and honestly, rents haven't gone down in I mean substantially in a long, long time. So and it's not to say that it can't happen. It can happen. You want to make sure that you're well protected when you're doing a strategy like this. Um, but here's the thing, there's way too much information to put into this short uh, Facebook Live video. That's why and she so, told me I can't talk. <laughs> <laughs> so if we have you thinking, and hopefully we do, um, reach out to us truly because we absolutely love to talk real estate with people. We love to open people's eyes and show them things that they've never heard of. And the likelihood is you've probably never heard of it. and as you're hearing it, you might be thinking the same thing that that family member of ours was thinking was, hell no, but sleep on it. Think about it again tomorrow. And if you're considering it, reach out to us. Um, you can reach Shane directly at 608-352-0440 or just send him a text. Shoot him a send us a message right here. That's fine too. You can, yeah, send us a message on Facebook. Comment below if you're interested um, and we can help talk about your situation, where you're at and what that would look like for you. I'm not a financial planner, but I'll definitely help you see how you can use your finances to make them better. <laughs> we got some super special spreadsheets that we use. So, <laughs> Anyways, that's it for today. We've talked your ear off. Hopefully we've int introduced you to a brand new train of thinking. Um, and maybe it'll work for you, maybe it won't. If it does, reach out to us. Sounds good, guys. All right, so again, you know, we like to say that Almost anybody can become a real estate agent. It's just not that hard. And almost any of those real estate agents can help you successfully buy and sell homes. But nobody makes buying and selling real estate more fun than Carmen and Shane. See you soon.